in this video a tester for MOSFETs and small signal FETs. And the peculiar uh, thing is there that also NPN transistors with a good um, current amplification, say above 70, can be tested. This is the circuit. I hope it's visible from this distance. So let's take some time. And in fact it is a so-called Hick oscillator. And this is a book from 1954. Uh, where that Hick oscillator is published. And it's the most important and, sorry, not the most important, but the most uh, simple um, oscillator that you can make. You have here in the um, anode lead a coil and that coil is Coupled back to the grid, uh, the sensitive grid, and the phase must be correct. Um, the phase must be changed, and that means that the whole thing starts to oscillate. And there is, of course, this is not a schematic, by the way, a transistor version from that Hick oscillator, and that's here. And here on the breadboard. Um, in fact, it's very simple. You try to get the MOSFET under test into oscillation. And that's here at the moment. This is the oscillation that the MOSFET uh, generates in the Hick oscillator. And this is the frequency 64 kilohertz. And perhaps for a better understanding, I want to show the first sketch that I made. Uh, a ferrite rod, um, windings here and windings there. And the windings are not very critical. I've made here 85 turns and here 100 turns. And the... Um, Supply voltage is sent into that uh, test circuit to the collector or to the drain and the emitter goes to ground or the source goes to ground and here we have the base or the grid. The diodes here uh, have the only function to limit the current, sorry, the voltage to the, to the grid. A too high voltage can uh, damage the grid. So I pan over the circuit somewhat and I hope that this video will not be too long. The ferrite rod has a length from 8 cm, diameter 1 cm, the wire is 0.4 mm, but that's not very critical. You can also use much more thinner wire. And don't be afraid uh, when you make it somewhat sloppy. That also has good properties. Because the um, internal capacitance gets lower when you wind this coil somewhat sloppy. And here are 85 turns on the coil and 100 turns, and the 100 turns is in fact the backup link coil to the, uh, to the MOSFET transistor under test. So we have here a certain frequency. That frequency will depend on the MOSFET that you test. So it could be that it's higher than uh, 64 kilohertz. And again, these diodes prevent that your 
MOSFET or your small signal FET um, gets damaged on its gate by a too high voltage, that's one of the issues from the Hick oscillator here with a tube and here with a transistor. The Hick oscillator can give a quite high voltage up to the sensitive gate from your MOSFET. That's the reason why these diodes are here with that resistor. When the whole thing does not oscillate, reverse one of the windings. So X, I here, reverse it when the circuit doesn't oscillate or reverse one of these windings. That doesn't matter. And here is the output to the counter and the scope. This is the circuit on the breadboard, but more or less in a definite way. You see here the ferrite rod, the coil, here the potentiometer with which you can set the oscillation. So when I change the value from the pot meter, the oscillator gets more or less voltage added. That of course means that um, it oscillates or does not oscillate. And again, the peculiar thing, also ambient transistors work. There are few uh, more things to tell. Of course, this is only the N MOSFET tester, but when, when you want to test P MOSFETs, the whole voltage must be reversed. So this must be negative and this must be positive in that case. And you can use a polarity reverse switch. Uh, that's showed here, the input and the output. When you move the switch to the other position, uh, the polarity is switched here from positive to negative, etc. But of course, you must also switch that 10 microfarad cap in another position. That could be uh, a little bit a problem. Uh, you can also uh, omit this, this 10 microfarad cap in that case when you want to make the tester for PMP MOSFETs, sorry, P MOSFETs or PMP transistors. So that's important. This electrolytic cap may not be reversed. Ok, I think that was all to tell, approximately, perhaps this video is quite long. Useful circuit I think, and I've tested all these MOSFETs here with the circuit, and here are their pin connections. The 76143P, the IRF Z4 6N, the BUZ71, the BUZ10 and the Y310, that's a small signal N FET made for radio applications, oscillators etc. And um, important to tell, um, when the amplitude here is small, the MOSFET or the FET doesn't amplify so much. And when it's big here, you can conclude that the FET or the N MOSFET is amplifying properly.